a triangle or pulse can be specified um, by uh, lambda t which is given as t plus 1 for t between minus 1 and 0 minus t plus 1 for t between 0 and 1 now the first question here a is to sketch the signal now sketch the signal x of t now x of t is given as a function of lambda t so we can um, basically rewrite x of t um, specifically to kind of uh, see what it is exactly so x of t is then equal to right lambda t now here we have t plus 3n and we have t here so all we need to do to get t plus 3n is just to replace wherever we see t we just replace it by t plus 3n okay so we have t plus 3n now plus 1 for um, t between 0 and minus 1 and then we also have um, minus t plus 3n plus 1 for um, t between 1 and zero okay so um this is basically t plus one plus three n if you were to rewrite it so you could see that there's a shift um of minus three right so if we were to graph this so if we can graph this right we can just shift it um um to the left because it's a plus here we can just shift shift it to the left and then we get this okay so how to graph t how to graph this lambda t alone okay so i have zero here um one two It's not up to scale, but you get the point. I doubt it's gonna come down here, but anyway, um, etc. etc. Okay, so um, here I have um, so I have my t here, and I have my x of t here. Okay, so I have t I had uh, for lambda t. Let's go back. A l let's go back up a little bit. Um, I have t plus one and then um, minus t plus one. So for t between minus one and zero. So I have for t between minus one and zero. I have t plus one. Now to graph t plus one, you know that's just a, uh, a linear like a line, right? So for um, just like when you had like y is equal to x plus 1 right just how you would graph it that's the same thing over here so if t if t is 0 um, if t is 0 then your x of t would be 1 right and um, if t is minus 1 then you have a 0 so basically you have a line over here so this is a straight line okay now that's for between minus one and zero okay now for zero and one you have minus t plus one and same way you would have a uh, negative slope going down over here okay so now that's your t plus one I remember x of t we are trying to graph x of t so we just need to shift it um, by minus three so uh, we would have it over here and it's a summation also oh okay well it's not up to scale it, they should be they should have the same um, I'm terrible at graphing. 
and then I have over here as well shifted um, here this is one all the way though they should be it should be the same um, amplitude or maximum point over here it should be one okay so that you sh you see uh, you see here that it's shifted by um, three right minus three so you have um, here you have one two three and then over here you have uh, one two three so it's, it's this is how you, you graph it so you you graph it from over here just like straight line um, respecting the uh, intervals and then you just shift it by three basically that's what it is okay so now that was question a we already graphed it now B um, is to find the Fourier uh, series coefficients x n of x of t now if we go to the uh, FE handbook the um, on page 199 Fourier series those coefficients are given by a n b n over here it's just x of n I mean it's the same thing anyway but those are you know it, it's as if we were to find um, a of n b of n etc now the way to do it is um, to note you know because we have on page 199 uh, that particular um, interval for a of zero so we can deduct from here that um, it follows this truncated um, what do you call it truncated signal x t zero so we have x of zero is going to be one t zero right um, x t zero of f But, but that your f is um, essentially uh, n over t n over t zero and uh, f is equal to n over t zero in this particular case because we're following the um, integral on page 199 over there you know you're taking the, um, the integral of the signal over here which is x of t uh, you have 1 over t um, integral 0 to t f of t dt that's what I have there for a, a 0 so x of 0 for us as well applying it here for our x of t this is what we have now um, so essentially um, in this case if we use the Fourier transform let's go ahead and use the, uh, the Fourier transform go back to page what page is that again Fourier transform pairs for lambda t okay we're dealing with this function over here lambda um, t or do they call it t over tau in the f domain that should give me tau sinc squared f okay so now um, we don't have uh, we don't have tau or anything like that we're only dealing with t's so essentially what we have now is let me write it down over here t0 in this case would be r lambda t and uh, my xt in the in the um, f domain would be sinc squared of f we don't have any tau or anything like that okay so uh, then x of n would be 1 over t0. t0 is a period. Now if you go here in the graph, you can clearly see if you have a point over here, the period would be 1 
two, three, right? If I choose this point over here to find a period, then the period would be one, two, three. That's how you find period, basically, right? So your period T0 here is equal to three. So I have one over three, right? My um, uh, X of TF, which is over here, I have sync squared, and my F is N over T0, so that's N over 3. And that's it. So this is my uh, Fourier series coefficient. And this was question B. Okay, so what we did here was um, we departed from from page 199 regarding the coefficient over there so you look at that integral and you apply it to this particular signal and we have this with the period being 3 and we just apply Fourier transform from there um, our function over here is lambda t and that transform into the f domain using the table on 202 gives me sync squared okay and then all I'm doing is just replacing it here and that's pretty much it okay let's go back to um, the question what's the next one find the Fourier series coefficients y of n of the signal yt xt minus t0 in terms of x of n so uh, okay so y of n in terms of x of n but then they give you y of t shifted. Okay, so c. So y of t is equal to x t minus t0. And they ask me to find the coefficient y of n in terms of x of n. Now I have x of n over here, right? And y of t is in function of, of um, this, but shifted to t0. Now, the table 2 or 3 give you a time shift. So whenever you have a time shift over there, um, then you use the, uh, this is what they have. Let me write it down. You, you may not have the table, um, the book anyway. So when you're shifting it, t minus t0, that's this function over here is Fourier transform. Okay, this is just like the Laplace transform basically. Shifting it to minus 2 pi f t0. Okay, so um, so it's it's pretty easy from here, right? Sync squared n over 3 and shifted to e to the power minus 2 pi f t0 I don't know what t0 is, it's not given but if it was then you just replace that over here so basically here y of t is, is given in terms of this but shifted and you just apply your um, shifting property by adding the e to the power minus is on the table on page 203 so um, that's pretty much it for a y of n in terms of x of n because x of n is over here anyway but shifted to t0 and that's it equal to if you replace by f of 0 then that will be uh, 1 3 sync squared n of 3 because if you know your period is the inverse of your frequency and vice versa right so if you have t0 is equal to 3 then your f0 is 1 over 3 okay so here we're dealing with n so you have e to the power of minus 2 pi um, n over 3 right t0 and that's it